Coach Craig, in today's video, I'm going over the top 10 foods that you need to avoid in order to build muscle. And so it's not that you can't build muscle eating these foods, it's that they're simply overrated. And by overrated, I mean that people have higher expectations than last time, thinking that these are just the foods that you have to have in your diet. That if you're not eating these, that well, you're just missing out and you're not going to build nearly as much muscle. And remember, we're talking about muscle, we're not talking about getting fat on some kind of a bulk, we're talking about hard lean muscle, which is what most of you are actually looking for. Number 10 is steak. And why steak? steak. Everyone's thinking, what are you talking about? Steak is amazing. Steak is going to help you build so much muscle. Well, the harsh reality is this. The majority of steaks have more fat than they have protein. Steaks are very high in fat. Unless you're eating like Coach Greg, eating filet mignons all the time, you're going to have a hard time not getting in a lot of calories when you're eating a lot of steak. And remember, I'm talking about building muscle, not putting on a bunch of fat. And so if you are choosing steak, choose leaner cuts of steak. Oftentimes, steaks can be well over 200 calories per 100 gram serving. That is a lot. It's just over three ounces. And so what would be a better alternative? Well, for example, if you're having fish, for example, salmon, the fat that's in salmon is actually healthier than the fat that's in steak. And so why would you choose to eat steak when you could have a better alternative and that being salmon? And if you're not trying to get a lot of calories, well, why not have chicken? Chicken's not only going to be cheaper, it's also going to be lower in calories. And as a ratio of calories to protein, it's going to be much higher in protein. And so clearly chicken, a better choice over steak. Unless, of course, you're bulking or if you're rich and you don't care about the price of food. And who doesn't care about the price of food? Have you seen the price of food lately? It's ridiculous. Number nine, whole eggs. Come on, people. You know that there's protein in the white, right? An average size egg has four grams of protein and only 16 calories. An average size egg, 75 calories, and perhaps six or seven grams of protein. And so, yeah, there's more protein in the whole egg. But imagine instead of that one whole egg for 75 calories, seven grams of protein, you had four egg whites for about 65 calories and 16 grams of protein. You've just consumed 10 calories left and over doubled your protein. Who do you think is building more muscle? The person who had one whole egg or the person had four egg whites? And so I'm not saying not to eat whole eggs, but they are clearly overrated. And so what can you do? Those of you who are Coach Greg haters saying, I need to eat my whole eggs. A whole egg is so it's healthy. You got to do it. Why not have both? Why not, for example, have two whole eggs and four egg whites? Would that not be a better choice? You could not only get 14 grams of protein from the whole eggs, but you could also then get in 16 grams of protein for a total of 30 grams of protein from the egg whites. And what you did right there is save a significant amount of calories. You're saving over 100 calories from mostly fat from the whole egg. Now, I'm not saying not to consume any fats, but do you really think that whole eggs have the healthiest sorts of fats in this entire universe? Have you ever heard of salmon, trout, fish, fatty fish with omega-3 fatty acids? These are even healthier sources than that of the fats in eggs. So there's no magic secret to whole eggs. It's not going to suddenly boost your testosterone by 50%. The cholesterol in whole eggs is not something that you need to have a hundred of in order to be healthy. And so I'm not saying not to eat whole eggs ever. I'm saying don't go crazy on it. It's all about moderation. Number eight, it's bread. And not just any kind of bread. It's Ezekiel bread. People are obsessed with eating certain kinds of bread as if it's so much better than the other breads. Oh my God, I need Ezekiel bread. Oh, it has to be this grain, stone ground, whatever, stone cold Steve Austin bread. It's got to be this. It's got to be that. Oh, it's have sprouts in it. It's so good. It's got so much fiber. Eat regular ass bread, people. Regular ass bread. You're not getting all your health from bread. If you are thinking, oh, I'm going to be so much healthier because I'm eating Ezekiel's bread. It's got to sprout in it. You're freaking out to lunch. You really think that bread is where we're getting the majority of your nutrients from? Now listen, it's what you put on the bread. Have regular ass bread, put on some egg whites, even a whole egg, perhaps one, with some avocado and some fruits and vegetables. Do you not think that's way healthier than eating two slices of Ezekiel? Have one slice of regular ass white bread and put on something healthy. 
fruits, vegetables, chicken, fish, do whatever. So much healthier. Have you not seen the amazing recipes in my cookbook using rice cakes rather than bread? Think of it. Rice cakes, lower in calories. It's not what you get from the bread or the rice cake. It's what you put on top. Think of it. It's the cherry on top. It's what you're actually putting on the slice of bread that makes it healthy in the first place. Number seven, lean ground beef. This is a trick. It's not lean. And so when they say lean ground beef, did you know that what that means is it's 15% of the calories from fat. You're thinking, oh, 15%, that's really lean. 15%, that's that number that Coach Greg says that's healthy for a minute. 15% means it's 15% by weight. Remember, a lot of lean ground beef is actually water. And so what you need to actually do is say 15% times nine, nine times 15 is 135 calories. There is 135 calories per 100 gram serving. And so it's over 50% fat. Lean ground beef has over 200 calories per 100 grams. It's just over three ounces. That is a lot. Even extra lean ground beef, still 10% of the calories come from fat. 10 times nine, nine calories per one gram of fat means there's 90 calories out of, in extra lean ground beef, approximately 180 calories per 100 gram serving. That is a lot. And so it's still about 50% fat. And so imagine if they'd said, instead of saying 10% fat for extra lean beef, they say, hey, this is 50% of the calories from fat. It's extra lean. It's super lean. You're thinking 50%, half of it is fat. How is that lean? If I said to you, my friend is 50% body fat, would you say, yeah, they're lean? Of course not. And so it's trickery. Even worse than lean ground beef would be regular ground beef, medium, 20%. It's the ridiculous of the fat. It's so high in calories. Sure, if you're bulking, fantastic. But remember, this is muscle building food, not fat building foods. And so if you're going to choose lean ground beef, don't choose lean. Choose extra lean at a minimum. Or if you're in the United States, they make even leaner than last time. Choose the leanest cut of lean ground beef that you can possibly find. And number six, sorry, Sam Sulik, is that intra-workout dextrocyclodextrin, whatever intra-workout drink with calories, that is not a great muscle building food. Let's be honest. How how many calories are you burning during the gym during that one hour workout? I don't even care if it's leg day. Do you know that you burn more calories going for a brisk walk for an hour than you do when you're lifting weights at the gym for most people? Think of it. What are you mostly doing at the gym? No, not avoiding looking at other girls so you don't end up on some other Joey Swole video. I'm talking about what are you actually doing? What you're actually doing is resting. The majority of time at your gym, you're standing there waiting between sets. Time it. Time every time you do a set. Have a stopwatch. Start the stopwatch when you do the set. Do the set and stop it after. Do that for the entirety of your workout and see how many minutes you worked out in total. It's going to be far less than half. No one I know to go to the gym, unless you're doing a circuit workout and you're not resting between sets, is actually training more than they're resting. And so when you go to the gym, you're mostly resting. When you go for a walk, brisk walk for an hour, how many times are you stopping? Perhaps you stop once to pee or to talk to someone, whatever. Most of the time you're moving. And to burn calories, it's all about moving. How much weight did you actually move? And so thinking you're going to build a ton of muscle by drinking in some inter-workout dextro, sugar, cyclodextrin, whatever drink that you think you're going to have, it's overrated. Not saying you can't have it, not saying you shouldn't do it, but what I'm saying is if you're trying to build muscle, not fat, you don't need it. Number five, whole milk. Just because it has the word whole in it doesn't mean it's healthy. But you're thinking whole foods, whole wheat, whole this, whole that. Remember, you got to be careful of them holes. You never know what you might get from being in one of the holes. You might get pig guy. Careful when you're near those holes. And so in this particular case, whole milk has a lot of calories. Now, I know Sam Sulik's a fan, but remember, he's trying to get five or 6,000 calories in a day. That's a lot. And I know we've heard Rich Piana say you got to eat big to get big. But what he didn't say is you're going to eat big to get big and fat. And remember, this is a video about building muscle, not about getting big muscles with a bunch of fat. And so rather than whole milk, drink 2%, drink 1%, drink skim milk. You're going to get the same amount of protein, but with less extra fat. And remember, the fat you're getting from whole milk, it's from an animal source, which is going to be more saturated fat. And it's less healthy. If you're trying to get extra quality fats, good fats, omega-3 fatty acids, for example, you want to get those mostly, primarily from fatty fish. For example, salmon and trout and other fatty fish sources. Also, 
if you want to get some fats from avocado, that's also an excellent choice. Whole milk has about 160, sometimes 190 calories. Oftentimes it's homogenized whole milk. It's three and a quarter percent fat. You're thinking three and a quarter percent that that is so low. That's shredded. It's three and a quarter percent by weight. And so out of every hundred grams, there's three and a quarter grams of fat. But think of it, milk is listed per cup. And so 250 mils is two and a half times three and a quarter. It's what? Seven, eight grams of fat. That is a lot per cup, especially if you're drinking a gallon of it. That's a lot of fat. You don't need it. And so is whole milk overrated? Absolutely. People going on these go mad diets, you drink a gallon of milk. There's a lot of things better that you can drink than whole milk. And I'm not talking about whole milk with extra chocolate sauce mixed in it, which is what chocolate milk is. And so save your fat sources for elsewhere. Stop thinking you need to drink whole milk. It's not a muscle building food. It's overrated. It's not building more muscle than skim 1% or 2%. And so why bother? Number four, it's fast foods. I mean, let's be honest. How many of you are thinking, oh, it's leg day. I gotta have my Wendy's, McDonald's, my five burgers. I watch Sam Sulik do it. I need to get in all these extra calories. Do you really think that those calories are going to turn into the muscle? You're now an adult. Sorry, you're not six. When you were six years old, you played games like, let's play doctor. Let's play doctor tag. You pretended you were a surgeon. You pretend you're a doctor. When you're an adult, you don't live in bizarre world. You don't pretend and make believe. And so to the same extent, you can't be living in imagination world where you just think you can eat fast food and it's going to turn a muscle. It's not. It's high calories. It's not healthy. It's processed. There's nothing good about it. Stop with the fast food. Number three is peanut butter and nuts since peanut butter comes from nuts. And why is this? Well, so many people think they need to add peanut butter into their diets. Oh, I'm on a diet. I need to eat my peanut butter. Peanut butter, it's going to build so much muscle. I need those fats in the peanut butter. The healthy fats is so good for me, peanut butter. And I just love it. Do you know what you love? You love how it tastes. And you've been brainwashed or you brainwashed yourself into thinking that peanut butter is healthy. And they've done so at an early age. When you went to school and you had the peanut butter and jam sandwich, oh, it's so healthy. It's, it's that protein, you know, meat and alternatives and it, peanut butter's in there. And so your school dietitian said, yeah, I eat peanut butter. I have to go build you some so much muscle. Peanut butter has hardly any protein and what it's loaded in is fat. It's one of the worst things you can add to your diet if you think your goal is to build muscle. Now, if you're trying to get fat, it great. It'd be at the top of my list. If your goal is to get fat and not lose weight, not be lean, then I highly suggest you load in as much peanut butter as possible. It's great. Add it to everything. Add to your freaking shake. Spread it on your girlfriend. Put it everywhere. But be careful of those holes. Remember I warned you about those holes? Be careful. You might get pink eye. Careful where you put the peanut butter. So better alternatives, those powdered peanut butters, PB Fit and so on. But have you not made the amazing peanut butter recipes in my cookbook? It's ridiculous. It's almost as if it's from imagination land from when you're six years old. So enough with the peanut butter. It's overrated. You don't need it. There are better choices. Moving on to number two. The post-workout protein shake. You guys still believe in this? Are you still six years old? You believe in the tooth bunny and the Easter claws? Obviously, there's a Santa Claus and an Easter bunny and a tooth fairy. But there's no way you could still believe that there's a post-anabolic window. The muscles you're building come from the previous meal. Now listen, five opportunities for muscle protein synthesis occur. If you've been fasting all day and you haven't eaten and you're into one of those diets where you think that if you don't eat all morning that you're going to build more muscle, some magic trick from that, then yeah, have a freaking post-workout shake. But if you're eating a normal five meals a day already, there's absolutely no benefit to rushing in, having a shake right after your workout. Drive home and eat then. And in number one, and I do believe Sam Sulik is helping to dispel this myth, rice. So many people, at least in the past, thought, hey, the secret is chicken, broccoli, and rice. It was always rice. Salmon, rice. It was always fish, rice, chicken, rice, something, and rice. Rice is not a magic secret in how to build muscle. Almost anyone bulking, putting in back the food, they're thinking it has to have rice in it. What are you eating with rice? And for some people, you don't even like rice. If you love rice, well, that's great. But why wouldn't you eat a potato? You really think rice is healthier than potatoes? Why aren't you having chicken, broccoli, and potatoes? Potatoes are amazing. Why would you have rice all the time? It's not a magic. It's not a secret. Stop thinking that rice is some magic secret to building muscle. Rice is a carb. You can replace the rice with another carb. You can have pot popcorn, oatmeal, cereal even. Now, remember, try not to have too much sugar. Now, although you can get carbs and jelly beans and donuts and so on, I do suggest you have more complex carbs, things that are not processed, that are loaded in sugar. Overall, you are what you eat. Try to eat mostly healthy. If you want to have some junk, there's nothing wrong with that. 
Hopefully this list of the top 10 overrated foods, it helps you in some way. And speaking of overrated, you want some supplements that are underrated? Why not try G-Test, ActiBuilder, and Geo2 Max? These are absolutely amazing for many people. Underrated. Give them a try. See how amazing they work. In particular, Geo2 Max improve your endurance, your cardio ability to perform exercise. Do you know how much this can help if your goal is to lose weight or to continue to go on in the gym? If you don't have the energy, the stamina, you're not excited to go to the gym. Are you going to actually go work out? If you have better endurance, you're more likely to train. Interested in any of my supplements, sequel bars, and so on, please enter Cold Greg 10% off. And of course, you've seen the cookbook throughout this video and the training book, the circle dive book, how to lose weight and keep it off for the rest of your life. If you're interested in that or the harder than last time clothing line, the tanks, the hoodies, all that stuff, please get over to the website. Don't forget Toad Greg 10% off. Click the link in the description. And of course, free diet and training programs. You can get them all at my website. Please go there, become a newsletter subscriber. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm, like the video if you liked it. Please comment. What do you think about these you want more and of course don't forget to watch one of those two bloops and until next time i am out